Welcome back to My Clutching Guy, episode six. This time we're gonna be checking out the Helix on the secondary clutch here with uh, My Clutching Guy, William Clausen of Ibex. How are you, William? I'm doing great, thank you for asking. Good deal, all right, let's check out this uh, Helix. You said mentioned in our last episode that this is the brainchild of the secondary clutch. So explain to me how everything works. All right, so the secondary Helix <clears throat> is made up of the ramp and the cap. Some helixes are all one piece. This particular one is the one we offer for with our Can-Am Stage 2 kit. And it has an adjustable cap that can be twisted to adjust the tension on the torsion spring. So that's one little piece that is a particular advantage you get with the Ibex clutch kit is a full 360 degree adjustability of your torsion spring. That torsion spring is what maintains contact with the rollers on the ramp. So in our last episode uh, regarding this setup, you mentioned that there's two different types of springs. There's compression springs and torsion springs. What's the difference between them? So, the Can-Am is one of the only ones that uses a torsion spring. It has these little tabs on it, and it can be twisted to be able to adjust it. It gives a little better uh, back shift, uh -huh. which we'll explain in a minute, as well as <clears throat> better um, contact with the ramp. But the compression spring still works fabulous, and that's what most vehicles use. The compression spring does not have the little tabs on it, and it just literally is compression on this package. So as the helix shifts in and out, it crushes the spring. Oh, okay. Alrighty, William, I noticed that on this Ibex helix, you have got them numbered. What do these numbers mean and what do they do? So these numbers are degree marks from zero to 180 degrees. And there's a little line on the cap that you can line up with the different degrees. This is a way to know and measure how tight you have tightened the torsion spring. Three, when we were speaking about the secondary clutch and a little bit about how the helix works, you mentioned that these grooves in the back of this helix are the brains behind the secondary clutch. So could you explain to me how that works? Yes, so this is the ramp of the secondary clutch that is used to adjust the sensitivity of this system. In episode three, I mentioned that the second that a CVT system is a load sensing system. Mm -hmm. So to try to explain that, um, the load sensing is knowing the difference in mud versus the road versus sand versus um, various other different mediums going up a hill, going down a hill, these different things changes how hard it is to push the buggy. Just think about trying to go out there and give it a shove. It's a lot easier to push it down an asphalt road than it is to push it up in a mud puddle. Right, so it's going to change the way it shifts. Yeah, so that changes what gear you need to be in. This angle changes the sensitivity of this system. It is what senses that load. So when you hit some mud, the rollers pull back against this angle and want to shift you down. So when you increase that load going from asphalt to mud, it pushes harder on this ramp and shifts you back. The angle of that ramp is kind of like going from fine thread to coarse thread bolt. So a steeper helix is like a coarse thread bolt. Although you can screw a coarse thread bolt in faster, when you hit the bottom, you can't get it as tight. Right. A shallow helix is like a fine thread bolt. It takes a lot longer to screw it in, but it's more sensitive and can tighten down tighter. So when that, when that uh, ground hits the helix and pulls on it, a shallower helix is going to shift back faster just because it's sensing that load more. I say faster, but I mean it's going to shift back further is probably the more accurate statement. So it will gear you down further than a steeper helix. A steeper helix will shift you down quicker, but not as far. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, so there's bound to be a happy medium between the two in order to 
as I change conditions, as I jump from uh, dirt to the road or from dirt to sand, um, I there's going to be a happy medium between the two. So is that something that you've been able to figure out with this Ibex Helix? Yes, and that's what we've attempted to do was using um, both experience and some computer programming, we have figured out angles that work with the balance, as we mentioned, and also <clears throat> with the fly weights that go into the primary. Because, as I mentioned, we've talked about the load from the ground side. Mm -hmm. There's a load coming from the engine. It's trying to turn this belt. And that belt is trying to turn against the rollers going the other way, correct? Mm -hmm. So the ground is trying to stop you. The engine is trying to make you go. Mm -hmm. And both of those are an input of load to the helix. It doesn't really know the difference of the two. So you've got to balance the primary stuff with what's going on here as well. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that um, you have your primary clutch and the clutch flyweights work in conjunction with the secondary clutch and your helix, correct? Absolutely. The two, although are often separated by many companies, is not generally a wise choice. Okay, so I'm driving down, for example, William, I'm driving down the road, right? Um, I'm racing one of my buddies. I, uh, I'm driving and we just hammer it. Where is this going to be? Where am I going to be in relation to this, this groove as I increase in RPM? No, I'm glad you asked that. So this particular ramp is going to be dependent upon how fast you're going. Okay. So up here is going to be zero miles an hour and out here is full speed. Okay. So anywhere in between there, you are going to be, say, full speed is 80 miles an hour. You'd be 40 in the middle. Okay. Just depending on where you are. So that is a speed related ramp and your RPM is going to... Your goal is to keep maintain a steady RPM. And so when you punch it right from the bottom, you start to shift up, but we try to get we try to shift up as slowly, quote unquote, as possible until you reach your peak RPM. Let's pretend peak RPM is eight thousand RPM. Mm -hmm. So if eight thousand is what the manufacturer says is peak horsepower, we want to hit eight thousand. So we're gonna hit eight thousand and then at that point we wanna maintain a steady tension against the belt to hold 8,000, and if we hit a soft spot where the tires don't want to turn very good, we want to backshift so that we keep right. that 8,000. And then if we hit the road going downhill and all of a sudden we can roll easy, mm -hmm. we want to shift up as quick as possible to maintain that 8,000 RPM. So this ramp, a shallower helix, will increase your RPM, and a steeper helix will decrease your RPM. But obviously, as we mentioned earlier, there is a positive and negative to either one of those things. Mm -hmm. So my so in an optimal world, what I'm going to want is we'll take an RPM, say 7,000 RPM. I want to this will I want to keep 7,000 RPM throughout this entire range, right? Exactly. If that's what the manufacturer had specified is peak horsepower. Yes. So in relation to the springs that we talked about and how this is a torsion spring, as I accelerate, the primary or the sorry, the secondary clutch is closing, right? Yes. So explain to me the actions of the spring as the secondary clutch closes and how it works in conjunction with that uh, helix. So as the secondary clutch closes, this spring is either crushing or well, is always crushing, and in a torsion spring, it's crushing and twisting. Okay. As that happens, the spring rate is going to determine how much force the spring puts. So, mm -hmm. um, let's just say this spring is a 180-280. That means that initially, it's going to be 180 pounds, and at full shift out, it's going to be 280 pounds. Right. And anywhere in between, it's in between those numbers. And we can change the spring rate by going from a 140 280 to a 200 280 or various other options based off of whether RPM is maintaining at a slow speed or at a high speed. So we have a crazy amount of things that we can adjust to hit this peak RPM that mm -hmm. we're talking about. The things to adjust is your primary spring, which does the exact same thing as the secondary spring. Mm -hmm. It 
holds back, it shifts you back, essentially, which is like shifting down. So primary spring, secondary spring, the flyweight shape, the flyweight weight, the mm -hmm. flyweight weight location, mm -hmm. and the helix shape. All of these things change how it shifts. And we at IBEX work together with the two clutches to try and come up with the package that gives you the most performance for both of them. Ideally, when it comes to springs, you want to be as light as you can get away with mm -hmm. because they're holding you back. You're going to lose power through a spring. They're an inefficient way of things, but they are a necess necessary evil. So we run as light of springs as we possibly can without sacrificing backshift and um, belt life. Okay, so as we're looking at this setup right here, essentially, as we speed up, we're moving along this line here, mm -hmm. and this torsion spring here is compressing. Yes, compressing and twisting. And twisting. This, this particular spring is going to uh, compress and twist as we move, as we up yes. speed. And the cool thing with this helix, we give you the ability to rapidly adjust in the field mm -hmm. um, by just twisting this helix cap. Right, so as this helix, this helix cap is going to adjust the tension on that spring, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to episode six of My Clutching Guy here with William at Ibex. Um, next time we're gonna be going over all the tools that you need to change out your clutch weights, to uh, change your helix and to adjust everything in order to find that optimal horsepower that we're always looking for. Well, thank you very much, William, for joining me, and we'll see you next time, won't we? Sounds like a party. All righty.